Here's the test scene from the explosions tutorial and we're going to use this to look at three methods that you can use to do explosions in Box2D. Uh, the first one I've called proximity and that simply takes um, the center of mass of every body that can be found within a certain radius. So we use the world query, uh, what's it called? Query AABB, I think, something like that. And then we check the distance between our exploding thing here, this little circle in the middle, and that body and check uh, if it's within our radius and then we simply apply an impulse to push it away from this location. And that gets us something like that. So that's not too bad for starters. But there's a couple of problems uh, with this and they are if I just pause this immediately after exploding and then step a little bit like that, we can see that the blast has gone down to this one through the ground and it's gone through this platform to hit those ones up there as well. So that's not very realistic. And also this piece over here, uh, this has not been affected at all even though it is within the radius and that's because the center of mass is up here somewhere. Um, so that's one problem. Uh, another issue is that, if I just bring this up here a little bit, we can see that if we explode this here, even though each thing on each side here is the exact same surface area and the exact same weight and the exact same distance from the explosion, because there's four bodies here and only one body there, they'll get an, uh, a different amount of impulse given to them. So if I single step this again, we can see after a few steps the one on the right has acquired a whole lot more momentum. So that's not quite realistic either. And finally, another problem. Well, they're not problems really. I mean, this is probably okay for a lot of a lot of games. Uh, I'll explode the bomb here. <coughs> excuse me here. <coughs> and we look at what happens to that block on the top. We can see that because we've given the impulse to this block at its center of mass, it just sort of moves straight upwards. Actually this block is doing the same thing as well, isn't it? They're not twisting or turning at all um, because then they have not acquired any torque from that explosion. So the next method that we can use to improve on those things is um, a raycast method and that will do something like this. So this uses the raycast query from the, the Box2D world and from that we can find where each of these rays hits the first fixture it can hit in the world and the point that it hits it at. Uh, and then we can use that point to apply the impulse at. So that immediately gets us some nice features like we don't hit this uh, collection of bodies down here anymore because it, the rays don't go through the ground and they don't go through platforms. So we're using line of sight to get much more realistic results and oops, hold on. So we get something like this. <coughs> Bang. Otherwise it's a uh, fairly similar to the first method, except we've also cured the problem about torque. Uh, how do I do this? So if I explode this about here like we did last time, we can see that even on the first step, these bodies here have been twisted a little bit and they're twisting as they fly away and that's because uh, we were doing 
we were giving them a little bit more of an off center impulse. So you can see here we were probably doing something like this and this rather than giving the impulse at the center of mass. And we've also fixed that other problem that we ha <coughs> had which was, um, sorry my voice is going strange for some reason. The other problem we had was of course this one. And this is fixed now because we are basically using the actual surface area of these things rather than the number of bodies that they are made of. So if I single step this through a little bit we can see both sides of this are receiving approximately the same amount of impulse. Okay, and the last method that we looked at in the tutorial was called the particles method and what this does is it sprays a whole bunch of little particles out from the grenade here. So actually let's just illustrate that up here. It goes bang like that. So does that remind you of anything? Fourth of July. <laughs> so what we have here is, if I just zoom in on one of these things, we have a little circle body here and this is quite heavy but it's very small and it starts off moving very fast but it has a high linear damping to slow it down quite quickly. So this just simulates a whole bunch of air particles flying out from the explosion location. And of course they hit things, and when they hit things they bounce off. So let's start oops, let's start with the same position that we had before. And we'll step this, we'll step it in real time first to see what it looks like. And of course you wouldn't draw those little dots. If you're making a game from this, you'd draw some smoke puffs or uh, sparks or something like that instead of these lines. But for the tutorial this is a good way to visualize what's happening. So I'll just do that by pausing this time and we'll step through and see each step what happens. So the first thing we notice that's different is that uh, when we had ray casts before, the ray casts were just going into the ground and they were, do were not doing anything at all. But with the particles method, we can see that all the particles that went down towards the ground have bounced off and now they're heading upwards. So this is a lot more accurate model of what actually happens in an explosion because the, the energy just doesn't go into nowhere. It, it sort of re rebounds at, at like a, a wave, a blast wave. I don't think it would rebound perfectly like this in real life, but um, it would rebound somewhat, nonetheless. Uh, so anyway, next step. And now we can see that the blast actually manages to travel around corners, which is, I think, somewhat realistic as well. And, and we can see it even manages to go around this little plate like that. And it takes a little bit of time to get there too. So with the other two methods that we were using, we just applied an impulse on these blocks here and the closer blocks to the explosion at the same time. So this method is probably a little bit more realistic in that it takes a little bit of time for the explosion to travel or the blast force to travel to the blocks that are further away and it's a little bit hard to see I think but yeah it's too hard to see <laughs> but um, sometimes you can actually see the blast traveling across the blocks as it hits them uh, we might have to slow this down to see it I think but so we can see that the, the blocks at the bottom have been hit first whereas the blocks towards the top of this pile are still 
have not they still have not been reached by the blast wave but they will be now like that so it's just a few milliseconds of difference but uh, it can add a nice touch of realism um, so obviously the drawback with this method is that it uses a lot more CPU time so whether you would want to do this for um, a mobile device game I'm not too sure you'd have to try it and see especially if you're having a lot of explosions going on it might be a little bit um, CPU intensive but of course you can alter the number of particles that you're using so we have 32 at the moment and I think I've set this demo to be to go up to 128 so with particles we can try that as well so on a desktop PC that's no problem at all but um, yeah like I say mobile devices you might want to scale down the number of particles here okay so you can get the um, source code and the binaries for this on the iForce2D website so go and check it out thank you